Hello, hello, this is Lord of Time 23. Um, this is my first video that I'm making where I'm actually talking through it. So if uh, um, any of the volume or audio is a little off, it is my first time. So hopefully it all goes smoothly though. Um, so let's jump right into it. I figured for one of the first videos I'll make, I will show new simmers how to get going with the sims, get started, how to make your first sim. Um, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of every little detail. However, I am just going to kind of show the basics so that you can get your game going, jump into it. Um, I, I do have um, more than just the base game installed. However, I will, I'm going to stick to just base game stuff for now and um, I'll do a little explanation about all the packs and stuff that you can get for your game too. So let's jump into it. I don't like having videos with the whole big spiel at the beginning. Um, so you just downloaded your game, you turned it on, you had your loading screen at the beginning, and now it has brought you to this screen. So everything on this screen is how you're going to get your game going. I know that when you um, first download it, for the, you'll have like a blurb pop up in the center of the screen that will explain a little bit about the game. Um, Mine's already downloaded, so obviously we're not going to see that. Also, you won't have this new game or load game here. This will show up once you've made a few, even just one save file. Um, and then you can kind of, like I said, pick, make a new game altogether or load previous games that you've already done. This we'll get into once we actually start, but I'm just going to explain a few of the things that are on the home screen as well. So down here are your typical game options. Um, all of these ones that are blurred out will show up more in, later on in the game once you're actually playing with a sim. Um, but it, you know, it's just typical stuff, save, exit, game options to change, maybe your audio or the music. Um, there is a tutorial option here that you can enable and it will give you a little more tips and tricks to help you because it is a big game. There's a lot of things going on um, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So this is always a good thing to turn on just for an extra hand too. Make sure you always hit apply changes when you're done. Otherwise it won't save anything. It just goes back to what you previously had. Um, so then up here, obviously home, it's underlined. This is what we've got for home. It might give you little blurbs about new packs that have come out or updates or um, just information The Sims gives you to keep up to date on everything. And then here, which I have already clicked, but we'll show you again, is our packs options. So I'm one of the crazy simmers that buys every single pack. I can't help it. I started the collection. I got to finish it now. So um, I have every pack and like I said, I have them all installed. So I'll try not to focus too much on that stuff, but uh, definitely go through this list. You'll see a lot of different things that you can add into your game, different gameplay, new clothes, new furniture, um, just a lot of cool stuff that you can definitely add to your game. There's also little kits too, which are a lot cheaper, but they just add a few things here and there. Um, maybe I'll do a pack video for you guys too, just to kind of show which ones are good, which ones um, you probably don't really need, but um, they all give you a little bit of something. So anyways, going back over here, um, since we're starting fresh for the video, I'm going to hit new game. You guys would be hitting this to get things going, um, but I'm going to hit new game now. Right away, it brings you to create a sim, or CAS is a short form for it. Um, as soon as you start, you do have the option to do this, which it can be kind of cool. Um, I, I would suggest for your first time, though, you know, make your sim play with CAS a little bit because it is a big part of the game. Um, so this is like a story thing you can do where it asks you questions. Uh, we're not going to do that right now, but basically that would build a sim for you and you can edit it once uh, they kind of build it from there, too. So it is a fun option if you don't really want to get into like heavy-handed editing of your sim. Um, so this is what we start with with create a sim. Um, as you can see this is a guy. Um, over here you can change to a female if you wanted to and usually it's, it can be kind of funny because the facial features of one will transfer to the other uh, male or female so you'll get some funny looking sims when you first change um, but you can come down to this to just randomize a sim to kind of start with. Uh, that way, you know, you don't have to do a ton of work at it, every little detail. I always do this when I start a new sim. 
I, I just find it easier. If you really want to, you know, build from the bottom and go up, you're more than welcome to. Um, but anyways, we'll stick with her for now just to show you kind of what's going on. So the rest of this box here, you can see that we have um, the different age groups of the Sims that you can pick. You'll always start on a young adult when creating a new Sim. Uh, it's just kind of the middle ground. You, you know, you can start doing careers. You don't have to deal with school as a kid anymore. Um, and you don't want to start off as an old person, obviously. You won't have much gameplay that way. Um, so you will always start as a young adult. However, you can change to toddler, child, teenager, young adult, which these two look very similar to each other. Um, an adult, you can see that, you know, she'll start getting some aging lines on her face or um, for a girl, you know, her breasts might start sagging a little bit, little things like that. And then an elder, um, obviously is an elder. So we'll stick with young adult for now. Um, over here we have default walking style, which to be honest with you, I don't usually change. The only time I ever do is if it's like a rich person, I might, you know, make them have a little bit of a snooty walk or, um, maybe someone like, um, a model or an actress, I'll give her this walk just cause it, you know, gives them a little bit more sass. But for the most part, for most of my Sims, I just leave it on default. Um, you can add any of these in. Some might be added like the vampire one from a different pack, but I think for the most part, you should have the same ones that I have here. Um, so yeah, we'll leave it on that for now. And then coming down to here is our voice options. So while I'm clicking some of the buttons, I'll try not to talk too much just so you can hear the difference. I don't have my game volume set very high. Um, so just to quickly explain this bottom bar will change to low pitch to high pitch and then these are kind of preset ones that you can go to and then work off there if you prefer them. Um, so I usually for a girl go with the bird and I'll pick from here. All right, we'll give her that voice. It sounds nice. Um, so then moving on to the last box that we have here, this is um, if you did have other Sims in your family, which you're more than welcome to make more than one Sim right off the bat. It's really easy. You just come down here where you see um, your Sims face. We haven't named her yet, so it still says Sim 1. Um, and then you could go here, add a Sim. Um, like I said, I, I have the packs downloaded, so um, this is the occult Sims. We won't really focus on that, but it just gives you different... Um, occult sims that you could make. Um, same with cats and dogs. That's why I have this here. I'm pretty sure when you start, you'll just have the add a sim via story, which was that box that popped up when we first opened CAS. We'll have add a new sim, which is just adding a new random person um, that you can edit from there. Um, add a sim from the gallery, which I haven't gotten into the gallery yet. I'm going to wait until a little later in this video to explain what the gallery is. But more or less, uh, you can take a sim from other simmers that have uh, posted their sims on gallery and it will randomly place one into your uh, household here same with this button it re randomizes a sim from the gallery um so you're you're using someone else's work in a sense to um add into your game which is i mean more than fine that's what the gallery's for you want to be able to see what everybody else creates it's part of the fun um and then up here would be play with genetics so i'm just going to click it quick to show you i'm not going to add a second sim in the household just because i'm trying to you know get through the basics with one um, but if you did want to play with genetics so this would be adding um a sister a child a parent um it's nice to have because then you can get sims with the same likely like they they have similar facial features um they might have similar traits even but it, it's just nice to add so you're making things a little more realistic instead of just adding or making random sins that kind of look like the other person but you could tell i don't know they're not the, from the same family i guess so if you wanted to make a child you could do that um, the parent, it will automatically give you enough of a gap between age groups for the most part. Um, so she's a young adult right now, but she's also at the beginning of her young adult years. So her, the oldest that her parent could be would be a regular adult. And then say if um, she was already a regular adult, then the person would have automatically come out an elder. So that's if you're making a parent, um, a child, 
Same thing, you can see that like if you're making a child for her, you can't go past teenage years because it wouldn't make sense. You can't have、um, a child while your sim is a teenager in this game. You have to wait until young adult. So it kind of gives you that little age gap.、Um, and then, same thing, you can randomize what you're starting with. If you were to hit check, then、um, now he's officially in your household. His picture will be down here. And you can see here that we can make it. His sister, his mother, or just somebody that lives in the same household as him. Now, like I said, we're not going to keep him in here. I just want to focus on one sim, but I just wanted to explain how you can add children or parents or siblings.、Um, you can even add twins.、Um, it will just randomize someone that looks identical to your sim now.、Uh, so let's give her a name quick just so we don't have this little thing anymore.、Um, I honestly use the randomize a lot. I just. I have so many Sims. I've been playing for so long. You kind of start to run out of names after a while. So,、uh, sure, Sophie Scales. Why not? Something a little weird.、Um, so now we're just going to wrap up like her personal profile. So if you wanted to get back to this, you're just going to hit on this button right here again. You can anything that you want to disappear, just double click onto it.、Uh, so here we'll pick an aspiration now. So your aspiration is something in your Sims life. Um, like a goal that they want to reach. So if they want to have a big happy family,、um, that it would entail.、Um You know they want to have a large household. They want to have multiple children, and each one will have little、uh, goals and missions that you have to complete to be able to complete the aspiration.、Uh, and one, luckily, once you're done any of them, like let's say you had the big happy family, your sim's still a young, you know, an adult, and you have plenty of time to do another one. You could pick a later one later on, or if you get tired of the one you do have, you can always change it at any time. So this isn't super important to nail right away. Um, but here we're just going to make her. Like I said before, you won't have all these options.、Um, but I'm going to make her a painter. Nice, easy one to do.、Um, so automatically, with each aspiration, you're going to get a a trait、um, that applies to your sim. So for that one, I got muser. I think actually for any of the creative ones, you'll get muser. But if I were to pick this one, let's say、um, you're going to get a high metabolism, so you can eat a lot more things. You're easier to stay、uh, skinny because yes, unfortunately, your Sims can gain weight or lose weight in this game. It is it is very realistic.、Uh, so here we'll go back to painter. So that's our aspiration for now.、Um, Trait. So you get three of these traits, and they really do help to shape your Sim. They、uh, We'll give her little quirks or likes and dislikes in a sense that、uh, just you know make it a little more personal for each sim that you have.、Um, so for the options category options for them, we have emotional, hobby, lifestyle, and social.、Um, so I end up usually picking a lot of the emotional ones, not even intentionally, just. A lot of the good ones that will shape your sim are here, like active or goofball. If you have a silly sim, or romantic, if you know they're a little flirty.、Um, she is an artist, so I'm going to pick creative.、Um, I might come back to cheerful because I just always love having the cheerful trait. I use it on a lot of my sims, just because like why not be happy, right?、Um, so then under hobby, I'm going to pick. Art lover.、Um, obviously, she's an artist. We want her to like art,、um, but there's plenty of options. I think in your game right now, you'll have bookworm, maybe foodie, geek,、uh, music lover, and perfectionist. I don't think you'll have maker there.、Um, so this one, I don't. Sometimes it depends on the sim. Like I love picking loves outdoors,、um, just because you know. If you're doing an activity outside, it will give you little perks and stuff that just put your sim in a better mood. It might make learning new skills easier.、Um, I don't know. I just I really like using the Love Outdoors one. I find it really helpful in my gameplay. I guess、um, there are of course negative traits that you can add as well. So if your sim is a slob, it's really funny to put a slob sim with a sim that is、uh, neat because they're just constantly battling with each other. They annoy each other,、um, but you have to. I don't know. It's a, it's a little bit of an extra fun gameplay thing that you can do,、um, or finding someone that's a glutton and someone that's like athletic or lazy. I mean, they just they're constantly clashing with each other. The only thing though is, if I were to pick lazy, I'll show you quick. If I pick lazy now,、um, go back here. I can't pick active because it conflicts with lazy. So 
you kind of, you can't be picking uh, things that are going to contradict themselves all the time. You have to pick traits that kind of go together. Um, but you can even add, like, let's add a negative trait of kleptomaniac. So maybe when she's, you know, at her art shows and stuff, she's snagging little art pieces and taking extra things home with her. Um, I don't know. You, you can make the gameplay literally anything, and you're going to find that a, a lot of it's going on just in your head. But... Uh, it makes it interesting for yourself, right? So um, we'll stick with those traits. Why not? We'll keep Kleptomaniac. Um, and then lastly, down here, this is kind of a newer feature to Sims. It uh, ended up going in for a base game so everybody can get it into their game. So this is your likes and dislikes. Um, I do have the Dream Home Decorator Pack installed, so decor is here. But uh, you will just, if you only have base game, you'll only have these three here, which is still plenty enough. Um, so I always like to pick a favorite color. Now, uh, this was a feature that they had in Sims 3, and I don't know, I really liked it, because then if you had, you know, certain furniture in their bedroom or things like that, it, it put them in a better mood, and it was just, once again, a more personal thing that you can really dive into with your Sims. So, uh, let's say her favorite color is blue. And, uh, here, we'll pick one she doesn't like, orange. Um, so then you can see right here now this number has gone to 2 out of 20 so altogether you can pick 20 likes and dislikes. I don't usually fill it and um, for two reasons. One, it's just a lot of work to go through them all and like say if I click romance music it brings you right back to... Um, oh I thought it brought you back up to the top of the list. I guess not. So anyways if you pick romance music um, and then you end up going to a bar that... I don't know, isn't playing romance music, they might not be as in a good mood or whatever, or it might not even affect them. But if you go to um, somewhere and you don't like new age music, and it's going to put you in a bad mood if you're in that place that whole time. So I don't really, I don't really deal with the music that much just because... I don't know, it doesn't really interest me, I guess. But um, if you want to do that, you want to once again make it more personal, go right ahead. I'll leave a favorite because I don't think it really affects you if you don't have a favorite. And then for activity, um, so these are all things that are going to be skills that you can build up. So uh, fitness, dancing, um, we made her an artist, or an artist, sorry. So we're going to say that she likes to paint. Um, I'm not going to give her any dislikes so far, just because while you're doing your gameplay, it does pop up in gameplay, like are you, you know, you're doing an activity a lot and it will say, do you want to make this one of your likes or dislikes? So it gives you an option later to add more as you're playing. So like, I don't know, let's say uh, your sim keeps working out and she's not a fan of it or keeps having to swim and she doesn't like getting her fitness up. You can actually make it a dislike. So every time that she goes to, you know, do that workout thing, um, she might get a little bit of a negative, like, Ugh, I don't want to work out, which... I mean, come on, none of us do. Um, <laughs> not sure, some people like to, I guess. Um, so that's basically it for likes and dislikes. Decor um, has a lot of different options too, but I'm not going to pick one because I'm showing you base game stuff. So we officially have Sophie Scales personal background set in stone. And um, I mean, later on, there are cheats that you can use if you don't like some of these traits or something that you, can, or maybe if you didn't <laughs> like the name Sophie Scales, you are able to uh, go back using cheats to get rid of them and add new ones. Um, I'm going to do a cheat video later, later on just to uh, kind of go over the basics with you guys. Um, so look out for that. And then um, now we're going to going to get into the basics with our Sim herself. So... As you can see, when it started off, this is what she looks like. Um, interesting shoe combo with the slacks and the sweater. Um, but we can change all of that, so no worries. So we're going to give her a click. Now, uh, I'll start with these on the side here. So as you can see, you can make your sim very muscular. She's wearing a sweater right now, so there we go. We get very muscular. Or you can tone that down a little bit. She can be like a little fit or, you know, have no muscle to her at all. It's kind of skin and bones. Um, we'll leave it kind of where it was. And then you can also make her very skinny or a little larger. Um, same thing. We'll leave it in the middle where it was. And this doesn't look really realistic, so we'll kind of brace that out a little bit. So now, I know I took her shirt off, sorry, she's just standing in a bra, but it's easier to show the muscle definition and everything. Um, so now, looking at her body here, you are also able to manipulate things like making the shoulders bigger, you just click on it and drag, or uh, making 
the sides bigger. You can make your own more curves if you want. Uh, same thing with the hips. Basically anything that you hover over and it glows, you are able to adjust the size. So you can give her huge calves. Um, same with her arms. You can't do anything with the hands, um, but you can on the feet, click and drag, make her have big old feet or little feet. So you can really adjust the way that your sim is shaped. Um, literally you can even change how big her butt is or how big her boobs are. And you can also go a little saggier or much perkier. Um, a little high there, but here we'll give her, I think that's kind of what she had before. So um, I don't know, that looks pretty good. I guess we'll leave her like that. Um, I'll get into clothes in a second, but same thing with the face. If you click on the face, it brings you into a zoomed in version of it. And you can uh, literally do everything you were doing on the body. So if you see you hover over something and it glows, you're able to manipulate how it moves. So you can make her neck a little thinner or thicker. Um, you can make her chin. You can literally grab her whole head and make it bigger or thinner too. Um, I don't I don't usually do that because it makes them look weird. Um, clicking on the eyes, for an example, too, will bring up like a whole menu of preset eyes that you can give her. Um, same with the nose, the lips, the chin, but that's just from clicking on these parts. I think it will, yep, for the forehead. You can change the shape of her eyebrows. Same with the color or just leave it so it matches whatever hair color you have. Um, you can really get into like changing the whole shape of her face. And then if you, while you're on the face mode, if you go here, this is the detail mode. So this just brings you into a much more, like I can literally change the tip of her nose to really thin. I can make her nostrils bigger. Um, give her some bigger lips. You can, I don't know, make her eyebrows different shapes, give her kind of more of that angry brow. Um, you can even grab the pupils. Oh, that was the wrong button. You can even grab the pupils or the irises and make them huge or small or normal. You can really go into detail uh, the ears too. Her hair's covering it, so you can't really see it right now, but you can also do the ears. Um, so basically some of the options are just a little bit different from one to the other. So here you're more changing like the definition of the chin going side to side. Whereas when you're out of detail mode, it's more editing like the whole jaw with it. Um, it will bring it like out or in. Um, so you can get the side profile too, by the way, and kind of bring your lips in a little bit more if it looks weird or you can, you can literally adjust anything that's on their face, which I, I don't know. I absolutely love because I'll sit here for like hours at a time and just keep fiddling with every facial feature to make every person that I know in my life. Um, so anyways, next we're going to click on the hair. Basically anything you're clicking, it will bring you to that menu. So you don't actually have to, you know, look on the side and try to figure it out. But we're sticking to the face for a sec. So we're going to go to the hair. Um, so your hair, once again, everything that has this little symbol here or any of these symbols is from a pack. So um, unless you have that pack, obviously you'll recognize some of this stuff. But if not, here, we're just going to turn on our base game option. Um, if you are trying to search for things individually, you can always go to this arrow to do so. So I'm just going to go to packs and only turn on base game. So these are our base game options. If you want to break it down a little more too, because this is kind of the list of everything, you can do short, medium, long, or an updo. So I don't know, we'll give her a nice medium haircut, I guess. Um, there, that looks nice. If you ever do want to turn around, I'm using the um, two arrow keys on my keyboard to turn, but you can also use these big arrow ones on the bottom to kind of rotate her and see where you're looking and everything. Um, so we'll keep her with that haircut. If you did want to have different hairstyles for different outfits that your sim can wear, that's what this bar is up here. So you have your everyday, which is um, like your normal look all the time. And your everyday haircut will automatically apply to the rest of your outfits. However, if I were to go to formal right now, I could give her this haircut instead just because it looks, I don't know, a little more elegant or nice. Actually, I think this one kind of looked more formally, but um, you can literally edit any one, but whatever one you put on your everyday will automatically go to the rest of them that you have here. So for hair, um, I kind of like her hair dark, but there are so many different color options that you're able to use. And there are some, I'm not sure if there's any in base game, 
but uh, yeah, right here. Some of them do have like hair dye in them as well. However, you can't pick like what dyes go with it. So you kind of just pick a hair color. And if you liked one of the dyes with it, it's uh, that's the one that you're going to get. So I think some of these, this one, this some of these bright color ones are so cool because you get all the different colors of blues or um, the green one I know was really cool too. And uh, once you add more packs into your game, there are more of these hair dye um, or streak options or, you know, just different colors in the hair options. But I know base game only has maybe one or two. I'm not looking at the full list. Yeah, there's this one here as well. Oh, it doesn't really look like... Okay, there we go. So I guess you have to go into even the normal hair colors for that. Um... But these can be kind of fun too. You know, you got yourself a punk rock sim or someone who loves music and they're in a band or something like that. So, um, I lost our other hairstyle. Oh no. Sure, why not? We'll give her this one. That one looks nice. Okay, so that's kind of a little bit of the hair to explain. Um, I, sorry, I actually missed this whole part here too. So, more on the face, you can, um, do this to pick what her skin tone is going to be. So the cool thing about this is you can pick any of these and then there's a bar that goes up or down so you can make it darker or lighter. And if you did pick a shade that you liked, you can always hit this save button and it will save it down here as a custom palette. I'm not sure if that palette will apply to all your games. I'm not I don't think it will. I think it will just apply to this household because you used it on her. Um, so I don't think when you go and make a new family for a different lot or something like that, that this will still be here. However, you can use it amongst like the family or the household that you have with her. Um, so I don't know what one we had before, but sure, we'll give her that one again. Um, and then all of these are just little things that you can add um, just to make it a little more personal. So there is a face button you can use to just use a preset face. And then you could work off that with the edit detail mode or just the dragging like I showed you before. Um, but then these are things like crow's feet, that, you know, little wrinkle on the forehead. Um, you, if you don't want it on, once you click it, you just kind of hit this little X and it will go away. Um, I always like adding freckles. I think they're cute on Sims. So sure, we'll give her freckles. Why not? Uh, teeth. Um, you won't have some of these once again. Um, but these are like, if you have a teenager, you can add braces. And then when they become a young adult, they get them taken off. Or, um, they can have buck teeth, a gap tooth, some gold teeth. Um, there's, you know, you can get any option that you really like there. It doesn't really affect anything. Um, here you can have, you know, scars, things like that. Um, a lot of these are like scars and stuff too. Uh, so I'm not going to show you every single one of those. You, I don't use them a ton. You might. Um, so then going back to the face or the rest of it after that, um, you can give a hat to your sim if you really wanted to. I don't really use these because I usually spend a ton of time picking out a hairstyle and then I get stuck with a hat that's covering it and I don't know, it's just take the hat off I don't like it so um but you can you can add a hat to whatever you want or if it's formal um if you don't see any hats here you as you can see because you clicked formal now there's a formal thing in our search engine that I showed you before if you want to look at hats that aren't formal to maybe give to her you could literally just exit out on it and give her a witch's hat or uh, whatever one you wanted that way you're not actually limited to using formal. It just basically is doing that to give you preset quick options to pick. Uh, you can even get rid of the feminine one and it will show you all the guys options too. Like I said, I don't usually use hats and I'm not going to get into every out. Ooh, what an outfit. Some of the outfits that these automatically generate are just a riot. I, I always end up changing it. Your townies, which are the other sims that live in your town, are constantly wearing like ridiculous clothes. Um, nothing that matches or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to edit her every day for now just to kind of get you to get the gist of it. But uh, anyways, just wrapping up the top part, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Uh, you have accessories, which um, would be earrings, glasses, necklaces, and then makeup. So, um, I don't know, depending on the sim, I don't personally wear makeup myself, so I don't <laughs> I tend to add them, but like if I make an actress or, I don't know, like a gothic girl or a guy or something like that, then I'll add some eyeliner or like little things, or if the eye shape just doesn't look quite right, then sometimes like the eyeliners and stuff will add, um, just a little humph to it to 
make her look a little bit better. Um, so you have the eyeshadows, eyeliners. Um, sure, we'll leave that on. That's cute. Uh, the cheeks, you can use blush. I never really use the blush. Um, but the lipstick, I usually use all the time because I find the lips just fade right into the skin tone. So, I use this one. <laughs> it is definitely a base game. I know it has something up here, but this was something that was put into the game for, I believe it was the 20th anniversary of Sims. Um, but it, this just came out not too long ago. It might not be the 20th. I might be wrong about that. But it was something that was added to, to the game not too long ago. So that's why this symbol's here. Um, you'll see a, a, this symbol again when you're, you know, putting furniture in your house. Um, you, we got some other stuff like chairs and a table, um, a little flower pot that you can put on your table, just little things to add to your game that came out as a free gift. So that was kind of nice. Um, so don't worry, this symbol definitely is in base game. Any of the other ones that have just a circle here, not a flag though, are packs. Um, so I love this lipstick because first of all, it's just kind of a matte, it's nothing too fancy. Um, there are color swatches for every lipstick, every makeup, there's a color swatch as well. Um, so all that is, is if you click on one, you'll see this bar pop up. You can literally pick any of these colors, but what is cool that was also recently added is you can literally add it the exact color you want. I so wish they did this for the hair too, but they didn't, um, but you can do it for any of the makeups, which the nice thing about it is if you sit here and actually change like the hues, so the colors a little different, or what's this one, opacity, you can make it so it's not as vivid. Um, this one is, I believe, just color. Here, let me hover over it. Brightness. So how bright you want it to be. And then this one's saturation. So it would make it more of a red or more of um, a gray washed out color. So I think it was originally in the middle, but we're going to make it a little brighter and turn the down. There we go. Um, so it just gives you a uh, nice soft color. It's not so intense that, you know, we originally had. And then what I do is I hit this plus sign. So it's once again, saves it as a swatch, just like the skin. And then that way, if you're going to formal, you know, party wear, outdoor weather, whatever, you are able to pick the same color. So you don't have to like fiddle with these settings every single time and have to try the exact same color to match what you had in your everyday. Um, so only the lipstick and like the all the makeup um, is able to do this and the skin tone um, Unfortunately, you're not able to do it with like clothes or hair or um, Anything else besides these items. I really wish that they did that They had that kind of option for sims 3, but they never brought it in for sims 4 which uh, I don't know Maybe it lagged the game or something like that. I'm not sure um, so okay there we go. We're going to leave her face like this. Like I said, when you go to, you know, formal, she doesn't have the same makeup on, but that's kind of the nice thing about, you just, you just got to remember what ones you had, apply it to each one. There is no copy tool, which is annoying. It's frustrating. Um, but we're going to leave this like this for now. So let's get a shirt on this girl. She's just been standing here with a bra this whole time. So for, I think, yeah, I'm going to turn base game on here just so that we only have those ones coming up. Okay, so these are your shirt options. This is a good typical shirt I'll use for a lot of Sims, but you can, there's a lot of different styles here. As you add more games in, you'll get a lot more options. Like I have all the expansion packs, so I, I have to sift through so many different things. I always have to use my search engine to pick colors or pick what packs I'm looking for because it's just so much of a list to go through. But right now you just have base game or maybe one or two packs. So it's not too, too bad because you can just quickly go up and down this list here. Um, once you click shirts, you are able to kind of subcategorize too into t-shirts, blouses, sweaters, so on and so forth. Um, just so you can find things a little bit quicker. Um, and then all of these are, they have the same kind of options on the side here where you can do subcategories. So this is shirts. We'll go to full body, which would be things like dresses, full outfits. I don't have the base game turned on here. So you're seeing some other stuff from other packs there. But um, there was Star Wars stuff that was put in base games. So you'll see some Star Wars things in there. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. 
Um, but just kind of cute outfits that you you can't manipulate the shirt or the pants. Like they come together. Um, it, it's a full body. You can't change the shoes or if you want to put jewelry or any of that on. Actually, this outfit kind of looks cute on or maybe we'll leave that on. Um, but then pants has the same option. Uh, so you can do, you know, skirts, skinny teens. Skinny jeans is one of the things that has this symbol again. It is base game. Um, so you'll have these. Honestly, these pants are great. I use them all the time. Um, and they're new, so they're, I don't know, it's a nice add to the game. Um, so we're gonna keep that because I think that's kind of cute. I'll come back to this in a second just because I want to change her shoes. They're bothering me. Um, let's just give her some, you know, nice heels. So if you want to look at her outfit too, you can kind of turn her. And we're gonna go here now for accessories. So I did pick a long sleeve shirt so you won't actually be able to see if I put jewelry on her wrist. Uh, so we'll just avoid that for now. But you can do things like gloves, the bracelets we were just in, rings. You, I'll be able to add a ring. You can see that. Um, if you wanted her to have leggings on, you can pick from a lot of these options. You know, give her some tights just to so her legs aren't showing. Um, socks. And you can, once again, uh, like the makeup, change all of the colors if you wanted to just to show you I'll give her these these are obviously for the vampires um, so we'll leave her outfit like this I think that looks cute oh I forgot to show you something on the body actually so up here we have styled looks which at once again once you add more um, games to your game you could just hit try the style and it will put on the bracelets the makeup the if this person was wearing glasses in there she'd be wearing the glasses here so it will give you all those different things to um, just quickly put on an outfit if you don't want to go through this whole create a sim process it depends what I'm doing sometimes I just want to get right into building and I don't even care about the sim um, but these are just quick cute little outfits that you can kind of add in and it will show you what pack it's from at the top here there are base game ones too so I know all the pack ones are showing first, but there are base game ones preset and you can uh, once again do it for formal, athletic, there's some for each one. So if you just want to quickly bang one out and not focus on the little details of her, then go to styled looks. Then you don't have to, she'll still look nice, but you didn't have to do all the nitty gritty stuff. Um, and then here, I know we were already in here to show the skin tone, but I also forgot to show you that there are preset bodies that you could just pick from quickly. And there are tattoos that you can add to your sim. I use tattoos all the time. I also use the piercings all the time too, but I'm pretty sure that comes with the eco lifestyle pack. So you won't have it um, unless you have that, which words to the wise, it is a phenomenal pack. You get a lot of cool build stuff in it. Um, there's a lot of nice... Um, CAS items uh, like piercings or the jewelry or a lot of the clothes are really nice too um, So if you're gonna get any pack first and that's one of the expansion packs Which is one of the bigger packs you get a lot of stuff a new world so on and so forth in it I would definitely go for that one. It's a really really good one And of course, you know cottage living just came out too. That's a I've only had it for a few days and I'm already in love with it. Like you get so many cute stuff in there. Um, but like I said, I'll do a PAX video later just to kind of do a breakdown of everything that's out right now, which is a lot. So it will be a long video, which uh, kind of seems like this one's turning out to be too. I guess I'm going into a little more detail than I first anticipated. Um, so anyways, I'll pick a few tattoos here quick. I always go for the ankle ones. So here we'll give her the little sunset one. It's cute. Plus, I know, like, when we go to her outfit, you'll... I think you'll still be able to see it. Oh, just kind of. The shoe kind of covers it. But that's okay. We know it's there. So you can add tattoos. Um, and now that we kind of have our sim done, I know we're not doing the rest of the outfits. Um, but I'm just doing this one for now. Now that we have our sim done, we can look into starting the actual game. So, um... I always like to just in case something happens or um, sh your sim dies right away, which is totally possible. The accidents happen. Um, you can get strike by, struck by lightning if you have the seasons pack or you can start a fire in your kitchen and catch on fire right away. And uh, usually when you know once your sim's dead, she's dead and it's really crappy if you put all this work into it and then she died right away. So what I like to do is go up to this save household option. 
and I will hit the save to my library. Um, from here, you can change the name of the household title if you want, but it automatically picks your Sim's last name and puts it there. Um, you can see the full, kind of full body picture of your Sim and um, the second picture is, you know, the aspiration traits, so on and so forth, her name. Um, if you wanted to put a little description here, you could. Or if you also wanted to put hashtags in here, just so um, if you do eventually upload it to the gallery, that's a little way that people can, you know, find it um, later on. But um, if you wanted to upload to the gallery, you would click right here. Like I said, we'll get into that later. Um, but all I'm going to do right now is save it to my library. So then you can see later on um, this here, it, it's saved into your library now. And then down here, um, I'm not sure if my logo's in the way here or not. It might be, but you have two buttons right here. One's the play, one's the cancel if you hover over them. So we're just going to go ahead and hit play. So um, this screen is like your last chance. Are you sure you got everything good? Like I said, you can come back later and re-edit things um, by using a cheat. Um, however, you can come back and edit uh, minor things too, like her clothes, her makeup, her hairstyle, so on and so forth. You just can't change um, her traits or her weight or, um, you know, her muscle tone, uh, the way her body is kind of shaped in general. Uh, the premise is, is that once you made a sim, as her life goes on, she's going to change. Um, so you kind of stuck with the change. However, there are cheats that you can use to get back into like full edit mode so you can manipulate everything on her again. Um, so it, it's giving you this screen here as just like a, you know, make sure that you have everything set in stone. Um, you can also pick a picture for your household picture by clicking this and it'll just change, you know, how she's standing or looking at the camera. If you have multiple sims, it will change all of their poses too. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and hit save and play. So all of these are little like tips and tricks too that will help you in your game. Um, I should have shut this off so it didn't pop up for you guys. Um, this will come with seasons where you like the expansion pack where you actually get to pick what season you want to start in. Um, so for new players with just base game, you won't see this. I'm just going to pick spring um, just to, you know, whatever. That's when my year starts. Um, so on here, you can see all the different worlds that you are able to live in. Um, for base game, you're only going to get Willow Creek, which is this. You can see all these different lots here. Green means you're able to buy it with how much money you started with. Um, yellow, which I don't see any yellows, right? Oh, it's not showing up as yellow. Um, but yellow would mean you can't afford this. So what it says right there. And then this symbol here means that there's already a household or sim that lives on this lot. So you can't move yourself into somebody else's property. So what we're going to do, well, I'll show you the other two worlds with base game first. So you get Oasis Springs here which is more of the deserty look. Um, but if you actually click on some of these lots, I think just this neighborhood here um, with the Parch Prospects thing is actually desert looking. I'm pretty sure once you come up to these areas, you actually have like grass and uh, like kind of a nicer surrounding. It doesn't actually have the sand. I think you might get some of the sand in the public lots here. Um, but I'm pretty sure this neighborhood's the only one that you really, it, it's actually desert looking. The rest of this, I'm pretty sure has grass in it. Um, I, to be honest, I don't usually use this very often and I just started using it again because I did my not so berry mint challenge and I basically put a lot into each world because there are 10 houses. Um, and I used it right here for my not so berry red, um, if you want to look up a challenge, it's a fun challenge you can do for The Sims 4 that other Sims creator made. Uh, just type in Not So Berry Challenge Sims 4 on Google and you'll definitely find tons of information um, about it and you can play it for yourself. It's, it's a really fun challenge that you can do for yourself. Um, but we're just going to go into Willow Creek, Creek for now and uh, we'll pick this house. It's These three are kind of like the starter houses that you can use where your sim can definitely afford it. So this one's only 13,000. This one is 15,000 and this one is 15,000, almost 16. Um, and your sim starts with $20,000. I believe once you start adding more sims to your household, 
that number goes up. Not a ton though. So don't be expecting to like start a brand new game and you know, you can go here. Once again, there are cheats that you could use like free real estate. That would, oh, okay. It's not doing it right now, but that would um, make it so that all of these lots are literally free and you could just move your sim into any one there. Um, but we're not going to do that right now. It's too complicated. So we're just going to click this and move in, which is this little moving truck here. Um, it does give you the option if you wanted to buy the lot unfurnished, it would make it cheaper so that your remaining money would be more and then you can furnish it yourself later. Um, or I honestly, I just keep it furnished because easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Um, you can also bulldoze the lot to buy it, which would basically give you most of your money. You're only paying what a thousand five hundred now for the lot, but you literally won't have a house or anything on there. It's just going to be completely empty. Um, so if you do want to build right away, you're more than welcome to do that. Or you can buy one of these empty lots here. Each world does have at least one empty lot that you could build on. Um, or like I said, you can bulldoze it and do it. But we're just going to go furnish. Just I'm trying to trying to make this as quick as possible. And the video is getting a lot longer than I thought it would be. Which is okay if you're not minding. Um, so let this load again. Read some of the cute little quips that they have here. I love it. There's one that just says, okay. And uh, there is a backstory to why that's there. I don't remember why, but um, if, if you Google it, I'm sure you'll find it. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this right away because I don't want her moving. If you're wondering why she's wearing this outfit, it was probably her cold weather outfit, which we didn't edit. Um, here, I'm just going to make her wear it again. Um, she might get cold standing outside, but just because that's the one we edited, I want to show you. So I paused the game right away just because um, every second that you have it unpaused, time will continue going. And um, as time's going, things will happen in your game. Um, one, the time will change. So if you're, you know, sim has a job or something, you don't want to just walk away from your computer and leave it unpaused because she could be late to work or she could go into the kitchen and try to cook and start a fire and you're not paying attention and there goes your sim or <laughs> some of your furniture that you're going to have to rebuy again. Um, also, you don't want to keep playing because your sim has needs. So the needs are you know, like our basic needs, having to go to the bathroom, hungry, tired, uh, wanting to have fun. You don't want her to be bored, social. So unless your sim is a loner, which that is one of the traits, you definitely, you know, you're going to want to talk to other people. You can use your cell phone. You can go out to public lots, talk to people. Um, there's always people just walking around too. I'm sure eventually we'll see some. I'll, I'll show you later uh, when I'm going over the friends description, but uh, you know, that's just to keep your social bar up. Don't be a hermit and hide in your house all the time. And then hygiene, obviously. So shower, brushing your teeth, so on and so forth. So uh, I guess first what I'll do is explain kind of all the buttons we have here while I still have it paused. Um, so I obviously just went over needs. This is your bar to monitor, um, you know, what's your sim needs right now. So if I do press play, see how the red arrows are coming up? That's because over time your needs are going to decay. And as you know, your sim gets bored, um, which is happening right now, she's going to go watch TV to make sure that her fun meter goes up. So you can see now that she's watching, the meter's going up. So you're going to have to do things for your, your sim to um, keep those needs filled. For the most part, they will, like if you're not paying attention to all of them because you have multiple sims or something. Um, for the most part, they'll take care of their basic needs by themselves before, you know, their hunger gets too low and they starve or they pee their pants, which can happen. And if you're in a group of people, your sim gets super embarrassed about it. Um, so for the most part, like if, if the things are around them that they'll need, like the stove and the fridge to cook, the shower, the sink and the toilet to do your bathroom stuff, or a bed or a couch to sleep. Um, they will, for the most part, take care of themselves. Um, but I mean, you don't want to leave them for too long. Like if, especially if you have them on a routine for work or um, if there's like a festival in another world, like another one of the worlds or lots or something, or someone has a birthday party or something like that, you don't want to just, you know, go to work and stuff absolutely miserable because you're not paying attention to their needs. So just stay on top of those. That's definitely like the most important part of your Sims. 
Um, so then as you saw here, she's watching TV. So anything that you click to do, which you can manipulate things by hovering it, once you see it glowing like the body parts before, you click it and you will get all these different options. Um, so each thing that glows obviously has options. So the bed to sleep, um, the stove to cook, same with the fridge, you get the same options for the most part. So if you're cooking, um, a screen will come up, you can pick what you wanna make. All of these options, once again, might not be here, um, but you get the premise. So grilled cheese is a typical one. There is actually like a hidden um, achievement or something like that if your sim only eats grilled cheeses. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I actually personally have never gotten it and I've been playing Sims 4 since it came out um, because I always end up forgetting and then make something else to eat or she'll get a snack out of the fridge and it's not grilled cheese, but um, literally click that to make a uh, family size of grilled cheese, whatever, and it will pop up on this bar here and now that's what your sim is going to be doing. So we'll let her do that kind of while I look around a little bit more. Um, so continuing on this bar right here will show you what money you have. You just saw the negative money sign pop up here. It's because you bought the items for this. So even something as simple as eating, uh, you will, oh, we got our cooking skill there. That's because she's cooking, obviously. Um, so just because uh, she's eating something, you still have to pay for it. So things like bills or um, if you have to repair your shower or uh, little things like that, like your, your money will deplete. So that's why you want your sim to have a job. Um, that way, you know, you don't run out of money so that you can live. Uh, now that she's done making this, I'm going to have her grab a serving. So you would just click on the plate, grab a serving. I'm just trying to show you guys the basics here. Um, and the reason I made four, even though she is a, a sim that lives by herself, is so that I can click and hold and drag this plate into my fridge. Or she could have clicked on it and put put away as well. And then um, she can go back later and get leftovers. So then that way you don't have to do that cooking process every time your sim's hungry. Um, it's just good to have, you know, a meal prepped. Usually when I get down to my last plate, even if she's not hungry in that moment, I'll make another serving of four or eight just so I always have food in the fridge. It's, I don't know, I find it easier. I think it's a, a good lesson to kind of go by just so you always have food at the house. If you do have people over at your house, sometimes they'll just straight up go in your fridge and take your food. So just keep an eye on that too, especially if you have leftovers. Um, for things like this, oh, she's going to clean it up, but the same way how I dragged the food, you can drag this plate to the sink, so then that way if she's, you know, lazy or not cleaning it up or she went to bed and you don't want it there, you can drag it to the sink to get rid of it. You can do that with, like, garbage into the garbage can, um, or if there was an item laying around that you could just grab, you could literally... Um, take it and pull it into her inventory personally. Um, I'm going to grab a book just so we can see that quick. Sorry, over here is the bedroom and there's like a bookshelf on the wall. So she's just going to grab, grab a random book. So as you can see, she has it in her hand and there's actually a physical book in her hand, right? Um, oh no, she's going to put it back on the shelf. Okay, we'll do it this way instead. So I'm going to click on the bookshelf and open it. Now anything with this orange thing, your sim doesn't actually have to do it. It will just do it automatically. So I hit open. So this is the full inventory of the bookshelf itself. So I'm going to take this and just put it out in the world for a second. Anything from any of those inventories, you can just drag around. Um, so now that we have this book out, say if she's in a public lot and she was supposed to take that book with her and didn't, um, and you don't want her to lose it, you can grab it and drag it and either hover over her picture and to see how it glows, hover over that and it will go into her inventory or if it's out, you can grab it again. Uh, where'd she go? Okay, let's find her sim first. Oh, there she is. Okay, so you can grab it, drag it out. And see how she's glowing white now? You can literally hover over her and it will go into her inventory. So your inventory is this button down here, which um, you can put so much stuff in there. Literally the food you make, you could put in there. If you find stuff outside, you can put it in there. Your books, um, anything that you make, like your art, so on and so forth. You, you can literally use your inventory for everything. And uh, you can even favorite items so that once this gets full, because it can depending on how you're playing your sim, 
Um, not sorry, not full. It never fills up. But once you just have a lot of stuff in there, it can be hard to find things. So you can go to filtered items and anything that you like might use often or um, I don't know is your favorite item. I guess you could favorite. Go here and it will show you just your favorite items. Same with um, all of this. I mean, you can find books, collectibles, so on and so forth, just to make it a little easier to find stuff. Um, or if you don't want what's in your inventory, so let's say your Sims gardening and you have a ton of extra mushrooms or apples or something and you don't want them there anymore, you can literally take it and drag it and um, put it down here, which is to sell it. And it says favor because I favorited it, but it wouldn't say that every time. Hit OK and you make a dollar off of it. So anything you find in the world that is draggable, maneuverable, whatever, you can actually sell it for a profit. So that's a good way if you don't want to get a job, you can, you know, sell your art, so on and so forth. Um, so right, right now these people are all on our front porch because of the welcome wagon. So I guess we'll let them in. To the, let them in. Um, invite neighbors in. So when you click on other sims, I showed you, you know, clicking on things to take care of your needs. You're going to get same kind of option menu. So we don't know this person yet. So we actually have to introduce ourselves to them and it will come up on here as one of our options or like what's in queue. So I could like, you know, say that I'm going to talk to him, say I'm going to talk to all of them and uh, it will just keep building up on the side here. So I think you can do up to like, I don't know, eight or ten different things to uh, queue up that you can do. Um, but now that our sim has actually talked and met to somebody, first you can see that our social bar is going to move up from that. Oh, maybe she doesn't like talking to this guy. Okay, there we go. Um, so our social bar is going to move up from that. But now if you go down beside your inventory button, you'll see relationships. So this is where you've met people. The game's taking a second to load. Give it a sec. Um, this is where you've met people and you can see, you know, how friendly you are with them. Um, if you guys are enemies, acquaintances, best friends, lovers even, um, you can click on people. And these are like basic ones that will pop up right away once you've met somebody. But if you go to more choices, it will give you subcategories. So friendly, funny, romance, mischief, mean, roommate um you won't have that in your beast game or actions um so friendly is just you know typical conversation discussing interests like getting to know the person funny you can tell like jokes and stories romance you can flirt um i don't know maybe i'll try flirting with this guy just so i can show you if the love meter comes up at the bottom So as you can see, it's showing flirty because that bar is there. And it still didn't show up. Um, well, anyways, I, he won't let me flirt a ton with him because I don't know him very Oh, there we go. Okay. So now that we flirted with him a little bit, you'll have a bar down here for love. So that's your romantic interest and your friendly interest. Um... You can always get that back down if you were to click, like if you accidentally did it or the other sim was flirting with you. You can get that back down by, you know, going to more choices, friendly. And then in here, there will be an option that says ask to just be friends right here. And that will make it so that he's no longer like the romantic bar goes all the way down. But your friendly bar, which is the green one on top, will stay there. So, um... That way, you know, you don't have some guy call and ask you on a date all the time because he's got a thing for you and he's annoying you. Um, so that's pretty much it for social interactions. I mean, you, you'll have to go through all the wheels and see everything that you could do to talk to people. Um, here is your skills. So when she was cooking, she got she started her skill set there. So as you can see, I think, yeah, so 27% complete. This bar will slowly go up the more that she cooks or watches the cooking network. Um, you can go up to 10 with most skills. There are some special skills, but I think most of them come out with packs that will give you, um, they're just like mini skills, I guess you'd call them, where um, they only go up to like level 5. Um, but most regular skills will go up to 10, and there are so many different things you can do, like painting, um, woodworking, or no, it's handiness, sorry, uh, charisma, logic, um, 
there's there's so many like guitar there's so many different skills that you i could list here um but right now because she has had social interactions with people she has started to build that skill and cooking she started to build that skill so just even doing regular everyday things your sims are eventually going to build skills um even if like i told her to go jogging right now which i would click on her and you get your own personal options um because she's clicking on herself so here i'll just show you this quick we'll do There we go. So now fitness has popped up because she is starting her fitness skill. And as she jogs, this will get higher. Um, right now, it started her at 3%, I guess. But as she's doing it, see, now it's at 4 So you can build skills fairly easily. You just have to find what skills in particular you want your sim to have. Um, I'm just realizing now I didn't even show you the rest of this bottom bar. So we've gone through all of these things here. Um, you won't have the social groups option or the own businesses because and those come with packs. Um, you will have this though, I didn't go over this. So this is your personality thing. Um, so it just shows you what traits you picked, your likes and dislikes. If you hover over them, you can pick that. And it looks like you can actually change those whenever you want. Um, lifestyle, I, lifestyles aren't a thing that I really play with. Honestly, I don't really get them. There's no point in really having them there, but if you want to look more into it, you're more than welcome to. Um, and the rest of this will come from like other packs, so I'm not really going to get into that. Um, up here, it shows you your Sims lifespan. So I have my lifespan set to long right now, which if you wanted to change it, you would go to your options menu, game options, game play, and this shows you... Um, you know, aging for sim, the autonomy, um, if you want them to auto age or not, so on and so forth. So I usually have mine set to long because otherwise like short, they'll literally age up in like, I don't know, a week. <laughs> and then normal, it's like a couple weeks. And then long, it's like a good chunk of time. So you just have more time to do stuff. Um, so I always leave mine at long. You can put yours to whatever you want though. But the reason I'm showing you that is because right here, it tells me that she is currently a young adult. Next age up point will be she turns into an adult and that will happen in 93 days. So that's why I have mine longer just so you, I don't know, you have more time to do stuff. But I guess depending on the game, I might make it a shorter lifespan or it just depends what you're playing in that moment. Um, here is your genealogy. So this will be if she had a child or a husband, it will show you, you know, uh, his picture here that they're married and they have a kid together down here think of a family tree that's basically what shows up here and it's kind of fun to have because if you've gone through a few generations of your sims and you know the current sim you're playing is this girl's great 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 grandchild then um it will show you the path that it took to get down to that person um but obviously we only made the one sin i didn't actually make her parents so she won't have anything above her so her lineage will start with her um, so that's just a cool thing to keep track of. This button here is your stats. Um, so as you can see, we cooked a meal. So we have that. How many times I've gone to the bathroom, how many meals I've eaten. It just kind of shows you all the different things that your Sims done throughout her life. Um, it even goes as far as, you know, how many times are you happy, bored, confident, which as you can see right now, she's flirty. So flirty has gone up one. Um, your Sim can have all of these different moods, uncomfortable, uh, tense, sad, playful, so on and so forth. Not all of them are good, not all of them are bad, um, but it will affect your sim's mood. If she's too tense, for an example, she might not want to do certain things, um, so you got to kind of keep that in check too. She's flirting right now because we flirted with that guy, so these are always fun to read too. Um, some of them are funny. You can always click that little sidebar too to see whatever the last one is. Um, so that's pretty much it for this section. So we've pretty much covered everything except for your job. Um, so right here is your career tab. So you can hit join career. Just um, this is like the speeds. So you can make things do triple speed, slow speed, so on and so forth. I'm just speeding it up because I'm impatient. She's still jogging. She's going back home. Okay, so now she's looking on her phone for a job. So this menu is going to come up here. <clears throat> so um, on here you have, you can look at the bar here to sort them a little bit better, but this is for all careers. This is for professions. 
um, regular careers and part-time. So these from scientist to actress are all professions. Now you won't get these with um, base game, you get these with different packs. The interior decorator one comes from the no new dream home decor pack. The actress one comes with the game get famous pack and the detective, the doctor, and the scientist all come from the get to work pack. Um, so you won't have these professions here unless you have any of those packs downloaded with your game. Um, you will however for sure have careers and some of the part-time jobs. So careers are as you can see um, you get a certain amount an hour it's an, an eight hour day and um, any of the letters in red you would be your days off and letters in blue would be the days you're working. Um, so you have it's in alphabetical order so um, if there's different ones here besides base game but I'll still pick a base game one we will do painter painter anyways so um, the cool thing about jobs is there is a career branch for each one so for painter we have master of the real and patron of the arts so they're just a little bit different um, you might get different rewards for completing the jobs um, but you have to kind of level up your careers. So you'll start at level one and you can work up to level 10, which is the highest career. Each promotion you get, you get like a pay increase, your hours will change, you might get more days off. Um, you literally even get like vacation days and stuff that your sim can take and still get paid for the day. Um, you have to be working for a little bit to do that. I don't think you get them right away. Obviously like real life, you're, you're literally thinking about, imagine yourself getting a job. Like it's, it's the same premise, okay? So she's a painter, we're gonna stick with that. So that now comes up in our career panel here. So if I hover over the picture, I can see that she's a painter one. Um, so like I said, you can get up to level 10 in each career. Um, the way that you're going to promote yourself and your job is one, by going to work. So from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., um, she just got the job now, so obviously, and it's Sunday, so she's not going to be at work right now. But as of Monday, tomorrow morning, she'll go to work, which she'll just disappear off lot until 5 o'clock when she comes back. Um, here is your performance. So when she is at work, it will. Um, you can pick if you want her to be lazy, work hard, work normal by a little symbol that shows up here. You would click it and you can options will come up. Um, I usually do work hard if I'm just trying to get her promoted quickly, uh, but you don't have to. But this bar will go up every time and once you are all the way up at the top and this is yellow, then you will get a promotion um, at the end of your shift. So another thing to kind of boost this bar up a little bit is by making sure that every day your sim comes home, she does her daily task. So down here, hers is create paintings. It says not started because she hasn't made any paintings yet. Um, but if she were to create a painting right now, then she would be able to do that. Oh, sorry. I thought that was our house. I was like, why is it not letting me go inside? So um, in order to get this done, you have to have an object to do it. We don't have anything in this house to create a painting on. Oh, look at those people came to my house and they just left all their dishes all over the place. You can tell someone grabbed one of my grilled cheese sandwiches out of the fridge too. Anyways, <laughs> um, so obviously we're going to need an item to be able to do that. So if I, I'm going to pause the game just because I'm explaining this to you. Up in this bar is um, all of your things to kind of manipulate your game a little. So if you wanted to center on the lot like we are here, this is the lot that we've loaded onto. Then, uh, I don't know, let's just go to some random spot click this and it brings me right back to the house. So if you get lost, like looking around for something, then you can always click that button and it brings you right back. Same with on her. If you can't find her, you right click on her and it will bring you right to her. Um, and if this camera is here, that means that the camera will follow her as well. Um, but going back for a second. So see how all of our walls are like half down so I can still see in the house. If I didn't want that, that's what you use this button for. So right now, I, I usually play like this because I have paintings on my walls and stuff. I like looking at them. But you can go walls up view so the walls constantly stay up. They won't move down or anything. Or you can go to no walls. Um, so you just don't see your walls at all. That way you have better access to look at your whole house or see what people are doing in there. Um, like I said, I always leave them at half wall because it's just nice to have that. It makes you feel like you're in the house. 
if that makes sense. Um, and then this arrow here is going to be if you had a second floor on the house. Um, we don't. We have a roof there. But if you had a second floor, this arrow would be would, how you would get to it. And then to get back to your first floor there, if same thing, you had a basement, um, you would use the arrow to go down to be able to see your basement. So um, that's kind of the main gist there. You already know um, what this is. It's your options. This is your notifications, which are those bars that pop up, like when I got um, my skills or whatever. You can delete them if your notification bar gets full, which it will eventually. Um, but, it, I mean, just leave them until it's full, then you can delete them after that. But it's good because then you can see if, uh, I don't know, something happened or you got a promotion at job and you miss, at your job and you missed it when it went by. Um, just, I don't know, it's kind of nice to have those little, some of them are funny, so I don't know, read them. I would suggest you read them. Up to you, though. And then this one here is your camera. Um, I use my keyboard buttons. I'll only really use this when building, because if I'm, like, holding on to an object and you use your keyboard buttons, it just turns the object instead of turning the camera. So um, I'll use this when I'm building, but you don't have to it's up to you um, and then these two here are sims 3 camera sims 4 camera i keep it on sims 3 just because that's what i'm used to you might prefer sims 4 if fiddle around with the movement of doing things and see if you like it but i definitely prefer sims 3 camera i think it's a lot easier especially for newbies to kind of get a hang of a little bit better so if you like i said if you want to click that, go for it but if you're new to the game and you just want something easy just stick with sims 3 um, so that's that's it for that stuff there. If you don't want any of these things here, you just double click them again. Um, now, quickly, I am finally going to show you the gallery. So I'm sure you've seen this button in multiple stop spots. Um, like it was on the homepage. It was in Create a Sim. Um, this was here when we were looking at the whole world. Um, so I'm going to click it now because the gallery is um, just where you can save everything online to show to other people or where you can look for other people's stuff. Oh, let's connect to the internet quick. So you can connect to other people's stuff. Oh, I was looking up for a challenge. Actually, if you want to do a really cool challenge, this is uh, a fun one to do. I just finished mine uh, not that long ago. And uh, it was just a fun challenge that um, Deke1818 had made um, where you download this shell of a house and you can decorate it however you want. If you did want to look it up, you can look it up right here. Type this in under the hashtag menu in the gallery. Um, but we'll pause there. I'm going to show you how the gallery works first. So when you first open it, you'll see this, which is news. So this is... Um, these are all things that I've made and uploaded that people are downloading, so it tells you, or if you get new followers, or um, if uh, people comment on it, like you'll see all of it on here. Um, so I, I always like to go through it, because especially if someone takes the time to comment on my stuff, I like commenting back, or um, I like to just see what people like to download. It kind of helps me figure out what I'm going to build next. Um, so that's what the news tab is. The gallery, like I said, you can look up for other people's builds. If I didn't click this, it would just bring you to, you know, people that, stuff that people have posted lately or most popular. Or you can play with a lot of the settings here to find either households, uh, lots, or just individual rooms that you might want to build off of. Um, just a word to the wise, though. I mean, if you are going to download anybody else's stuff, just make sure that, um, you know, you're not re-uploading it to the gallery as your own. People take a lot of time to build this stuff and you don't want to, you know, copy their their hard work and get recognition for it when they were the ones who built it in the first place. There are um, things to stop you. For an example, I'm just clicking a random one. Um, it says right here, that this person has uploaded it and say if I downloaded her house and re-uploaded it to the gallery it would say by Lord of Time 23 because that's my name but then underneath of it it would say original by Synthos so I mean it, it still tries to give the original creator credit but just you know don't be a crappy person don't peel, steal people's stuff like people work hard on things um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool things you can look through on here. It's, it's crazy to see some of the creative stuff people come up with. I love it. I go through the gallery all the time. Um, and then this will be, mine says Lord of Time 23, obviously. That's my gamer tag. Um, but this will be whatever you made your, um, account name. So this is your catalog. Um, I won't go too much into it, but it's cool. It, it's, um, you can literally see the stuff that you made or you can go into other people's catalogs and see their stuff. 
Um, you, you can see how many shared items you have, how many downloads in the gallery you have, and how many followers. Um, you can also check like if you hit friends, who you're following or whatever. Um, and then if you go to view catalog, it looks very similar to our gallery tab, but it is just your stuff. So this is like things that I've made on the gallery and uploaded for other people to download. Um, I really like this. Like I go through it all the time. I'm, I'm like obsessed with my own stuff, I guess. I don't know, but I'm trying to get like a lot of them up to higher downloads and um, that it's a good way to see too, like I said before, just what people are interested in. So um, for an example, actually, I built this house and I didn't, e I wasn't even really sure if I really liked the look of it. I didn't know if it, you know, if it was that nice of a house. I downloaded it and it's still got like 57 downloads. So obviously other people like it too. Um, same with this kid's room. This was my first thing that went over a hundred downloads and I was baffled because I didn't think it was something that people really wanted. Um, so it's just a good way to keep track of different things that you've built and, uh, you know, you, you can see what other people like and like this one here, you know, like there's a good chunk of downloads on it. So it gives me the indication that a lot of people want more of the uh, public lots instead of houses or, um, you know, these two people prefer starter homes because it's something easy that they can get going with. Um, but, you know, a lot of people make some really crazy stuff on here. It's it's phenomenal to go through the gallery. Um, and then our last tab here is my gallery or my library, sorry. So remember how in the beginning when I was creating the sim, I saved her to my gallery. So this would be her here. So um, this is everything that you've either saved from the gallery or you saved to your library itself. It's your library. So anything that you saved, you'll find here. Um, I have tons of different crap on here. I never uninstall stuff. This is some of that not so berry stuff I was talking about earlier. If you go through my uh, my catalog there, you'll see some more of it. Um, but yeah, the, your library is just stuff that you save that you can, you know, go and place on other lots, so on and so forth. Um, so check out the gallery. It's really interesting. It gives you good inspiration. But like I said, you know, don't don't steal other people's stuff because they work really hard on a lot of it. Um, so going back to these buttons here, this one would bring you back to our, I'll show you quick, our world where we were first picking a house. <clears throat> While that loads, we'll read the little quips. So this brings us back to our world. Um, you can literally jump into any of these other houses and it won't affect your game. You can, um, if you didn't want this to move at all, you can go into your game options and make it so she won't age or she'll only age while you're in, in the game. Um, but you could literally start playing these two people or these two people over here and it's not going to affect the rest of your, your sim at all. Um, but for the most part, I try to keep each save file, which remember at the beginning how it said new, new game or load game. Um, I try to keep each load as uh, just the one household. Um, unless like she has a son, he ages up, maybe I'll move him in down the street or something like that. So then I'll have two households going, but I try to kind of keep it within the family. Um, you can also edit any of these households too. Like if they have, like I was saying earlier, ridiculous outfits on that you just don't want to see him walking down the street because it's bothering you, then you can always obviously go into these um, and literally edit what they look like with this. Um, just that way you don't have a bunch of ugly people walking around your town or maybe it doesn't bother you. I don't know. I get weird about that, but um, I'm constantly editing, sim editing sims. I love being in CAS mode. Um, so yeah, you can kind of fiddle around with the world, but if you wanted to go back to her, click it. This bottom stuff will come up here and you would just hit play again to jump back into your world. Now, quickly, I'm just gonna show you kind of the basics of um, build mode. I'm gonna do a different tutorial video to really get into um, all the different things in build mode. Cause if I start going into all of it now, this video I'm making is gonna be like hours long. And uh, I think we're already getting pretty long right now. So quickly, we'll just jot back over to the house here. So, um, as you can see, the furniture in the house itself isn't very nice. It's not very personable. Also, we need to get her an easel so she can actually paint for her job to be able to get promotions. So we're going to go up to this button here, which if you hover over any of these, obviously, I should have said this earlier, we'll obviously say what each one is. Um, but we're going to click build mode. So this takes away all that bottom stuff and brings us into a grid world. 
Now it is, like I, I have season, so it's foggy out today, so the lighting's not very great. Um, we'll just keep it like this. But um, build mode is where you can literally pick any of this stuff up and do whatever with it. You can move it. Um, for the most part, you have to stay within the grid lines. If you see things when it comes red, it's because there are other objects in the way. I am going to show you this cheat really quick. I'll go over it again in my um, build tutorial video as well. But if you hold Control Shift and C, oh, Control Shift C, you will see this bar pop up here. Um, when it comes to building, I would 1000% recommend doing BB Move Objects. on so when you do this um exactly like this you can always look it up later so don't worry about you know remembering it right this second um if you hit enter it does move objects cheat is on now the only reason i recommend doing this is because a lot of your building time is going to be consumed by being restricted to what squares everything is in so the cheat that i just put in allows you to like literally put stuff anywhere so it's like halfway through the wall or over top of this other bed obviously still be conscious where you're putting things because like if i did this neither one of those beds is going to be usable right that's why they have um they have it set so you can only move within certain grids and you can't interject objects is that you want your objects to still be usable in game so um just be conscious of where you're putting things but like beforehand it wouldn't let me move this forward because obviously something was in the way but now like i can move it up i can move it wherever i wanted just i'm not as restricted into moving things so um i would definitely recommend that cheat but if you don't want to you can also just go bb move objects off and it gets rid of that um and then once again it makes it so that you have to follow the grid line so i'll leave it off for now um I really don't want to get into all of this right now in the video just because, uh, like I said, I'm going to do another build video. But if you're just looking for individual objects for now, this is the button that you want to go to. The one that looks like a chair. I'll explain the sidebar quick. So this one that has the house was that one that you did and you can literally pick things like the walls, the doors, the windows, so on and so forth. This one is room by function so you can pick... Um, kitchen stuff this is all the kitchen stuff you'll need so if you're looking for counters or stoves or stools or plants you'll find that there and so on and so forth for each room um, but i always go to search by object um, so there is a literal search bar where i could type easel and you know easels will come up or um, right now I'm on show all, which will literally show all objects, or I can go to comfort, services, plumbing, activities and skills, decorating, so on and so on and so forth, um, to kind of find subcategories. And then once I'm in one of those, I'm going to go to activities and skills because that's what we're looking for. You'll see these pictures here. So these pictures will indicate whether you're looking for knowledge items, creative items, recreation blah 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 so a lot of these will be skill items that will bump up certain skills so like if you're a scientist you might want a chemical analyzer or a telescope or a, a chessboard whatever um we're looking for an easel right now though because she's an artist so we'll go into creative a lot of these aren't from base game um but we're gonna find an easel so this is just the basic one cheap I think it's like $300, 350 um, So now, now, as you can see, I clicked it. I placed it. I'll place another one just to show you. When you place it, your money, you'll lose it there. If you don't want it, grab it, and you can bring it down to sell here. Or you can just hit delete on your keyboard, and it will sell it for you as well. Um, and you get your money back for it. So there's so many different items like i said i'm not doing a whole build tutorial right now but uh, we got her her easel so once we have built things the way that we want them we will go back up here to live mode so now we're back to where your sims actually you know live in her life um i have it paused right now so i'm going to come click on the easel um just to show you that her skill's going to go up and her her job thing is going to go up as well let's fast forward the time a little bit getting pretty late too so you got to be conscious of her going to bed soon because she has a job now so as she starts doing that a canvas pops up and see now it says just started 
we're going to go to skills. You can see she has the painting skill. And I mean, painting actually goes up. A lot of the skills will move up pretty quickly. So, you know, if your sim's needs are met, like just keep having her do the same thing over and over again if you're trying to build the skill up. Um, I'm pretty sure within your first painting, you might actually level up to level two a painting. I could be wrong. Mm, no, watching the time bar here showing how quickly it's going, I think uh, it might not quite make it to two. Oh, we were so close. So we're just going to click the painting here. You can either admire it because she's an art lover. So any of your traits that affect anything that you might do, um, the picture of the trait will show up there. Sell it to collector, create a copy. You can frame it and put it on your wall. However, if you go look at that, since she's only level one, it's the cheesiest little drawing in the world. Poor guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, with all of that information there, I think you guys are pretty set for getting your game going and um, getting a sim in the world and starting to follow the basic needs. There's a lot of different things you can play around with. Um, keep an eye open for my other tutorials. Uh, like I said, this is my first one, so um, keep an eye open for my next tutorials just to see how to do some of the other, a lot of the other stuff in the game. Like I've barely breach the surface. This is just the starter beginning stuff that you can do. Um, but I hope everything made sense. I hope this was helpful. And if you guys need any other videos, just leave a comment um, suggesting what tutorials you'd like to see. Um, like I said, I'm for sure going to be doing a build mode one just because I know of all the different things you can do in build mode. It can be overwhelming. I'm definitely going to do um, one to show the pros and cons of the different expansion packs and stuff, just so you know which ones you might be more interested in. Um, of course, it's going to be different for everybody, but regardless, um, ugh, I hate that the welcome wagon brings that fruitcake because it always makes your sim feel like crap. Honestly, just throw it out as soon as you get it. It's not worth it. Drag it to the sink, it's gone. Um, but yeah, so... If you guys have any other recommendations for different videos or anything, leave a comment. Please like and subscribe. Um, I definitely have no problem making these videos. I had a lot of fun doing it. So uh, if you guys need anything else, just let me know. All right. Thanks, guys.